I mix what I like, what I like. Mix what I like is exactly where you want it needs to be. I mix what I like organic vegan soul food from your media diet. Get healthy. Is that cool? I'm good. Yeah, all right. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. You want to start to get off, or you know? Yeah. Yeah. So this is okay. So um, my name is Noble Bratton. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm a longtime union activist. Comes from a union family. And we uh, kind of like love movies, right? And so the man called me up and said, yeah, you got ideas for a panel. And so I said, well, yeah, I should do something about, you know, maybe black films like that. And Kenneth suggested, he said, why don't you, um, you know, we were talking about this films and things. He said, why don't you check out this thing I mix what I like, about Jerry Ball. And I said, oh, yeah, I remember Jerry Ball because I met him at the Harlem Book Fair years ago with this uh, about this book on uh, Malcolm X and the problems with the Marvel book. Right, 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 right. right. Okay, right, right. right. The problems with the Marvel book. And I said, I, I like me, you know, you know, but it's, it's been a long time. He says, well, he does this thing I mix with what I like. I said, oh, I said, yeah, I hear about it. So I checked it out. I said, oh, yeah. And then I checked out the thing with them and uh, Mr. Gant here. I said, well, yeah, I wonder if we could do this and do this with the panel. So I suggested to Manny that I got in touch with him. They said, yeah, we'd love to do it. So, boom, we're we're um, here, and you know that's uh, that's how that got um, started. So yeah, but you know I've been to several uh, left forums, and uh, just remember the Black, the Black Radical um, Congress, a Philip Randolph Institute taught some classes for the Marxist Education Project, stuff like that. That's that's part of it. So yeah, so let's, let's just get it started. So. Okay. No, uh, peace everybody, I'm Jared Ball, very uh, happy to be here, uh, and a, a professor and uh, a, a media maker, and um, supporter of activist efforts, and I have long thought, um, my academic career sort of forced a focus on this, but I've long developed, or been developing over a long period of time, this, uh, uh, an appreciation for the damage that film in particular does and can do, and the political function it has been attached to as a genre. Uh, and similar to, to, uh, uh, to what Noble was just saying, like many of us, we love films. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, but I just have increasingly become attuned to the need to be critical of them and offer space for criticism of film. Uh, that we don't see uh, in other spaces. So I'm very happy to be part of this discussion. Yeah. And, uh, and very similarly, uh, you know, I came to to make Gant's work sort of indirectly, and uh, uh, very happy to have because it's it is it is your your approach has has helped me greatly. So I look forward to getting to this this build here. Yeah. Peace. Uh, my name is Tu Gant. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, artists. Uh, I've worked in the arts in many different long ways as a teenager, uh, but I've I, I, I worked mainly in, in cinema and film, mostly in narrative filmmaking. I'm also a professor uh, of film and some cinema studies at Purchase College. I teach mostly film production um, in the BFA conservatory there. I do Cinema studies courses once a year. Um, the two areas that I focus in in cinema studies have been in called third cinema or revolution. You can go ahead. Yeah, okay. yeah. We call third cinema or revolutionary cinema. So African uh, Latin American cinema, um, 
cinema, uh, radical cinema of, of the U.S., things like the L.A. Rebellion, or even some of the white movements like like Robert Kramer, stuff, stuff like that. Um, and I also do teach a course in improvisation and cinema, uh, and the, the, some of the improvisational histories in cinema, which many people uh, underplay and, and kind of under under research, actually. And um, yeah, and uh, my political history, you know, comes down to a, 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 I started off when I was an actor, very interested in the black arts movement. And I, I would say the black arts movement and my studies of that was a bit of a, was probably part of my, my political awakening. Um, and overall, um, in my left political awakening, and then that's, sit attached to me into all of my artistic pursuits, which then also forced me to broaden my my analysis and my analytical approach to cinema, um, both as critic, um, spectator, but also just as an actual creator of the work. Yeah, so, yeah, and like, you know, Jared's work, I've been familiar with for, you know, quite a while, and I've been happy to, you know, get some synthesis with him and, 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 and go through these analysis. So, yeah, and I'm very happy to be here as well. Okay, so we're gonna ask, uh, talk about the two films, Origin, Ava DuVernay film. Has anyone seen Origin? No. Very yeah. Cool. Talk about yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Yeah. And, <laughs> then, uh, and American fiction. Mm -hmm. seen American fiction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, is, what origin is? Well, the thing that got me, one of the things that got me interested in, in doing this, is that these films are about black writers writing books, mm -hmm. and they're um, a bit different because most of the time when you have writers writing books. It, it, they, the films can themselves can be very boring, you know, it's like they're typing, they go through this angst, you know, there's that, what's that fake that scene in Julia, James Bond throws the type right out the window mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. But th this, these were, um, both of them are uh, different. And um, the Ava DuVernay film, uh, unfortunately, it cost $40 million, I think it made $5 million, okay. And, um, was foundation funded mostly, we can get into, into that, which is another thing. But um, it's, it's not really based, it's kind of like the writing of this famous bestseller called Cast that Isabel Wilkerson wrote. Okay, and you get an idea about the book, but it's not really about the book, it's like about the writing of the book and some of the ideas in the book. Okay. Um, and you get Isabel's personal life. Then she's writing the book, and she's putting her uh, mother and cousin she's really close to, and she's got, it looks like COPD, and she gradually succumbs to this, and all this is in the context of getting this book done. Okay. Um, the performances generally are good, and it's just doing the general sort of thing. And, but, I, you know, the, the, I find the film like really uneven, and some of it kind of strange, and sometimes it bit off more than, you know, it could chew, I thought, you know. And sometimes it's really unclear what's, some of what's going on. There's a lot of visual, analogical reasoning. So you get a visual and you, you're supposed to link it up with like what you've seen before. And it kind of really doesn't work and uh, to me, right? And you get the whole thing about cast, which is this, you know, it's Isabel Workinson's thing. Cast is this, is because the origins of our discontents, right? And this recalls, you know, Shakespeare and Freud, civilization and its discontents and that sort of thing which I have a, a really big problem with, but she runs with it in the film. Even Ava DuVernay says that she is not too clear about this, that she agrees with this, but this is the film. But, you know. The other thing I found is that um, 
just as an aside, about 13 years ago, Ava DuVernay made a film called I Will Follow. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is where a black woman. Are that's, her first, that, that's, that's her first film, actually. That's her first film? That's, that's her first narrative film, actually. Yeah. With Sally Richardson, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's, this, it's kind of this thing with this woman dealing with her death. People come in and help her deal with the film, dealing with the house, going to the woman's things. So this is kind of trying, you know, mm -hmm. similar subject matter and sort of dealing with, but it's a, a bit more weighty because, you know, She's trying to deal with a lot of issues, and she she said she got financing, foundation financing, because she wanted to do the film quickly. She wanted to be considered politically at this time, and that really didn't work out. So, um, well, let's so let's let's start. What do you let's start with you two guys? Where are you? I I, I have an immediate so. Uh, it's interesting that that's, that's that that is Duvernay's um, narrative of why she had to go to places like the Ford Foundation because that's actually not true. The, 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 the truth is she she shot the film around uh, for a, quite a long time, but she well, she couldn't get uh, studio funding for it because the last several of her last films have not done well. She had a that's true. a major failure with her um, adaptation of a, a Wrinkle in Time, right? Mm -hmm. Which was, a, which was a huge financial failure. And then she also had a big thing where she was going to be adapting a DC Comics piece that never, she had a $100 million deal to do that, and then that never actually even left the, the writing room. So she kind of went into foundational money. But I do find it very interesting that a place is like the Ford Foundation wanted to be a part of this kind of narrative project. And I think that's something that um, people in the arts community need to be really paying attention to. Um, I mean, if you look at the history of places like the Ford Foundation and <laughs> how they, Jared and I have been talking about this uh, off like privately about history of places like the Ford Foundation and how they've shaped often what black art gets funded and promoted all the way from, you know, I hate to say it, even things like the Black Arts Movement in the 60s. Those foundations, um, they came from, there's a, you know, uh, Ed Bullen is the great playwright from the Black Arts Movement, talked about when he's working with the New Federal Theater up in Harlem, that their money was foundation money. And when that foundation money left, Bullen's and New Federal and them were left without anything. And this is kind of one of those histories, but you know, I don't want to digress too much. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, one of the things that I, I know that I'm glad you actually bring up DuVernay's earlier work because, and the, the phrase that I'm about to use is not a phrase that I made up. It comes from a scholar named Linda Williams who does a lot of analysis on melodrama. And she uses the phrase virtuous sufferers. And the idea of uh, the melodramatic character, the sufferer, the individual sufferer, and what makes them great is their virtue, right? Their ability as an individual, and I keep I know, pointing that word, to overcome. So yes, society will throw all these things at them, but what makes them great, what makes them triumphant is their <clears throat> virtue, whether it's their you know, individual spirit, so forth and so on. And she, she, DuVernay's consisted in these inner projects of these kind of virtuous sufferers. Um, I will follow, you know, the, the, she, she, in a very small scale, this kind of upper middle class woman uh, dealing with grief and how she kind of, you know, picks herself up. Uh, the film she did after that would have felt in the middle of nowhere, which I think is a very, cla in terms of class, is a lot of problems. Um, this woman, you know, dealing with the, the, the loss of her, uh, her significant partner to, to prison because he sells drugs and things like that. And, you know, even, even her, what I felt was to be very problematic um, depiction of the Central Park Five. This, 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 this idea of these, these five virtuous men, and not even like their families and the way they would, she would depict their families. Um, she likes to stick on this kind of individualist 
special quality, which then, you know, um, is ripe to not have any kind of critical analysis of collective action that might have helped people or collective action that might have not helped these people. Um, it, it, she, she's, she's playing into a liberal project, into liberal individualism, and to black, and then going to things like black excellence and all these things. And it, it, is, it is, her entire project is investing in a kind of old Hollywood aesthetic trope. Um, um, you can solve your problems if you tie into your own individual special thing that, that, that sits within you, right? So, you know, her critiques of structure then become defanged, you know, and then you get into something like Origin, which, and I'll, I'll pause and I can like, let Jerry, Jerry jump in. Um, it becomes extra insidious because each origin is, is supposed to have this grand narrative of why we are in the social situation that we're in. And it, you know, cast as a book, which I've never read, but I've read great, great, great criticisms. I know uh, Black Agenda Report had a great one. Um, doc, 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 Dr. CBS has, a, has another fan, fan, fantastic um, critique of the, of the book, but, um, it's a it's a it's a work where it, it's it's eliminating a material analysis of race, right, and going into a kind of uh, it's it's like a it's mystical, you know, it's like a mysticism. Race has race is uh, the cast and all these things is, is this mystic, mystical origin that we have to accept, but it also lets the the kind of class aspirations of the bourgeoisie class off the hook because, you know, you know, it's cast. It's not anything with, you know, uh, with social hierarchy and, you know, how capitalism and racism reduces these inequalities. So it, it all gets wiped, wiped away. But I'll, I'll pass it to Jared. I'll probably go no, yeah, no, I mean, you know, for me, again, you know, the, the, the first thing is that I think is in terms of my own approach, is that that all of this, I think, all of the, the particularly popular culture, the uh, imposition of film specifically, is all part of a of that counterinsurgent psychological warfare attempt on uh, all of us, and then specific in this case to uh, rebrand Black histories in a very safe way. I mean, this is what I keep coming back to. That in, that my joke is, that I think, not really a joke, but I think we are in a civilizational crisis of methodology that the organized technologies of media, their pervasiveness, their uh, military purpose, their origins in the military, their design to suppress radical efforts, to take the colonial projects out of, as they say, the jungles of Vietnam and bring them into the cities in, in, in black and brown America. All of it, I think, is, is, has to be part of the understanding of why we get origin, of why we get, and now more than ever, Disney, Netflix, uh, the Obama production team, uh, they're all arrayed to give, for instance, Obama's, the Obamas can now extend their political purpose into the media environment, uh, confusing the reality, suppressing potential radicalism, giving this, this comfortable outlet for people to, to uh, project their fantasies onto. And then again, we have to, when it comes, I, I, I mentioned it last night, I can't help but always mention it, especially when she comes up. Ava DuVernay comes out of an Oprah Winfrey public relations background. Mm -hmm. Even before we get to the quality of her films. So she's coming out of that, 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 and then when she does the film on Selma and he raises Kwame Ture, I can't. <laughs> I'm not aware of any, I, I think in my lifetime that has got to be among the more egregious acts. You know, I don't want to overdo it. It's, you know, I don't want to, you know. Bill Clinton was happy though. Of course, but, Bill the, but, but, was, but that, that's the point. That's the point. Because Bill Clinton, what Bill Clinton said in that moment right. in his speech, he acknowledged we were terrified of Kwame Ture. 
when the Guardian publishes that article in 2020 or whatever and saying that that the British intelligence community was looking to stop Stokely because his version of black power was pan-African and scientific socialism. So it took on a global aspect to, to, to negate his message. So to see that play out in a, in a film that again is also, to be fair, involving beautifully talented actors and cinematographers and lighting and audio and the stuff looks good, it sounds good, and then it, which I think makes interpreting the political message that much more difficult. And then because film does have, and it's always been understood that, that fully encapsulated, particularly in the movie theater, so in some ways, I'm, I'm almost wanting to, to, to maybe catch up on existing work or fill in some, some gaps in my own knowledge here, but I, I have to imagine that tactically, part of the move from the theater to the streaming services and people's homes has caused the ruling elite some measure of concern over the loss of the, the value of the, the movie house that it has to the particular setting it creates in, in capturing an audience. Mm -hmm. You don't have, you can't pause it, you can't turn it down, you can't walk away without losing the entire thing. You, if you go to a bathroom with a concession, you, you lose the whole, you, you re-enter another world. So it's always been understood to be that fully encapsulating experience that adds to the message delivery possible potential. You're supposed to immerse yourself. And with the, remember, did you all see that for a while they were running those previews in movie theaters where the kids go and sit down and the seats literally become like trees or the trees, like it's like, it's meant to like fully, that's what it was depicting. I thought it was a perfect depiction. You're supposed to be fully immersed so that all of the messages. So yeah, so then, so, so even before we get to the details of the film, and I'm happy to add on a little bit now, but, but I just wanted to, that for me is the important context. And then ultimately, I just want to restate that again, what I was trying to say last night, for instance, is that the only, I really do believe at this point that the only thing, the ruling, and the ruling media clear this, the only thing holding this whole project together is its media narrative. Mm -hmm. it's, its ability to, their ability to, to, to manipulate that dominant narrative because the, 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 the fissures I do see are very real in this society. And everything is, could, you could see where it could start to crack cracked and pop, fall apart, but then they, they have that, um, what is it, the, uh, in construction, the concrete, yeah. mm -hmm. and lock it back up with each narrative. So that's why this stuff takes on that much more of a kind of an importance, and I think we do need to be more vigilant. Uh, oh, sorry, one more thing. When we get criticism, one of our biggest criticisms on our platform that we often get is, why as revolutionaries do you spend so much time critiquing pop culture? It's a waste of time. And I think the exact opposite, because I see this as their primary weaponry and their full spectrum dominance efforts, and we do need to have an analysis. Yeah, that's, yeah because they were, this, is their, this is their soft power. Absolutely. They're very, <coughs> very clear about uh, mm -hmm. this. In fact, what's the guy, Nye? <clears throat> he wrote a book called uh, Soft Power, and yeah. he said this is, this is the thing. We, should, we really can't run around just bombing people into oblivion. You know, I mean, sometimes you've got to, right? But yeah, that's his thing. He says, no, we've got to use the, uh, so a problem with Selma, what ticked me off, because, um, you know, one time uh, he was still Stokely Carmichael, mm -hmm. we went to the same high school, mm -hmm. and he came up there, and Stokely was, you know. But uh, then what ticked me real off, aside from that, what ticked me off with Selma is that she kind of depicted James Foreman as like this petulant teenager. Right, and, right, you know, right, Foreman, the right. Foreman, and Martin Luther King, right, and he's the one with the real organization ability, holding SNCC together. So that, that like really, I knew James Foreman, and it really ticked me off uh, mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. But some of the details in the film, um, you know, one critic called um, there was this somatic analogy, and which he says it takes from the, it's in the book that. Cast, you know, is the bones like the infrastructure. Race is skin <laughs> and flesh. <laughs> and class is diction, accent, <laughs> wow. education, clothes, and then money. This is Wilkerson? This is Wilkerson. Wow. So I'm like, so it's the first thing, first thing I was listening, I said, oh, okay, this is this. The 
this is this is kind of weird. And then I thought of you know like my fair lady, you know this is where oh you know you know why why can't you know why you know why can't they teach their children how to speak? You, you know it's not her um, it's uh, it's uh, what did she say? It's it's her speech that keeps her in the gut. Right. 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 And so, and then of course, you know, if you've ever seen My Fair Lady, what happens is, is that she takes these things that, you know, the, the rain in Spain falls mainly into the plain, and so she speaks perfect, and then they have this huge party, and she comes out, and this, and this guy says, you know, her English is too good, she can't be English, she's a princess, and she's probably from Hungary, and it's a big joke, but I'm listening to this as well, I said, this is really kind of out there to say that class is just as real, you know, diction, like you can just dress a certain way mm -hmm. and you're a member of a certain social or political economic class. But that's what, that's um, Wilkerson's, you know, um, thing. The other thing with the, with the liberal thing, I guess we can get into this with the foundations and everything, that the caste idea, right, um, it was taken up by the liberals in the 30s, right? And you get an American dilemma, which Gunnar Myrdal, right? And he says it's caste. He wants to get away from race and especially from class. It's funded by the Carnegie Corporation, okay? They, 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 they did not fund all the black scholars. They gave Myrdal the money, brought him over here, and then put the black scholars under him. And at one point, uh, Ralph Bunch says, you know, we've got a Swedish Simon Legree kind of thing going on here. You know, he's, he's working under him, okay? And that's what's going on. Because what happened was, to, to really go further back, go quickly, you know, in 1900, the countries that really dominated the world, England, you know, British Empire, the US, they had these scholars and thinkers and politicians, and their thing was, you know, that the Watts, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, descended the elites of those, uh, those racial groups. We're the best, the white race is the finest, we're the cream of the white race, and we should run everything, and we should form a federation to run the world and, and bring peace because we are superior and we should bring, we're the ones to bring peace. Forget the real history of the British Empire, right? Remember they said federation, right? Maybe you think Star Trek. Mm -hmm. So, but what happens is, is that that breaks down with World War II and then the Japanese expose them at the Versailles Treaty they, they, where they want to put a racial um, uh, equality clause into the 14 points and Woodrow Wilson goes through these those bizarre maneuvers and it's kicked out. The rest of the darker races in the world get when did this and then the Garvey movement spreads it. Remember, and then you get Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam is always talking about the Asiatic black man. And they've got this thing about Japan, you know. And so what happens is, is that so the ruling orders they decide, well, we have to get all these dark people to stop talking about race and calling us names because this is bad for us. You know, this is bad for colleagues, this is unrest. And so they look over at India and this is well caste and they're not white, okay? And so this can get us off of this, all right? This is based, this is in Frank Furdy's book, um, The Hidden, I think it's called The Hidden War, Frank Furdy, you know? And so you end up with liberalism talking about caste, right? And the, of course, now the interesting thing about all of this is that though the liberals like the civil rights movement, the civil rights movement basically didn't talk about caste at all. It becomes race. But this, yeah, so but that's how you get into the whole liberal individualist sort of thing. And uh, Wilkerson dismisses Oliver C. Cox's critiques of this because even when the caste idea comes out, it's old. All right, but this is what goes on in the movie, it brings it back, it endorses it, and it says that the South was a caste society, Nazi Germany was a caste society, and then you have India, right? And Isabel Wilkerson in the movie endorses individual solutions, right? Even though Jim Crow was not defeated individually, Nazi Germany for damn sure wasn't, but then she brings in the Dalits, 
and they're clear that they're taking on collective action, and she has real doubts speaking for themselves. There are no real black people speaking for themselves now, right? So, and so. Well, that, but, and but what you're saying about the individualism I got, I got and, and Bedkar is it become more insidious in how she uses him as a Dalit rising because she's at his own individual greatness. Yeah, she makes it. Yeah. She de she then decontextualizes him. Wilkerson right. and Duvernay they decontextualize him from his social political history and any kind of analysis of the collective order or maybe whatever the, the, the serendipity that could happen within the, 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 the insidious structure of the caste system in India and make it this, in, this, 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 this incredible individual who stands above. And that's the individual we can all mirror for our own inspiration. Um, that's there's also <coughs> no colonialism happening. That also got to right. be. Well, that's, right. that, that thread that well, would have connected or could have been used to connect all those things. All those things, well, yeah. That's, that's totally, that's, totally but happening. This, but that's the, fast, that's the fascinating thing, right, is that with the Nazi Germany part, you know, she brings that in and tries to tie that up into Jim Crow enslavement. She has this, a real right. meeting took place with the whole thing about Jim Crow laws and the Nazis. Mm -hmm. The Nazis, by and large, rejected the Jim Crow laws. They said it just wouldn't work here. They also, this is an interesting sort of thing, they also would um, highlight lynchings in Nazi Germany and say, see, this is what those uncivilized Americans do. Okay, because things get really complicated. The real, the real link, though, you know, she says, oh, there's a link. The real link, though, is colonialism and colonial projects. Because after 1848 in, in Germany, it be, the, the Germans become, and these are like liberals, just and not, you know, they, they become really fascinated with the West, with what America is doing with the West, and see this as a model. And later, this develops into conquering the East, okay? But it's a lot older than the Nazis. I just want to be clear, with, I, I, just in case somebody sees what you're saying, that is not in the movie. That's definitely that part not. Is that, I just there's want to make no sure. It, 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 it's not really in the book. <laughs> no, there's, not no, there's no uh, colonialism I got you. Really. in the book. I got you. There's no I got colonialism you. in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? There's no colonialism, <laughs> even though the slave trade involved. <laughs> Right? right, and the slave trade is, that was just, is mentioned in the movie. That was just the particular caste formation as it applied in the United States. Right, right. 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 You know, it just you know, know. <laughs> it just be that way sometimes. Right. I wanna what you said about this. Could you read to me what they said? What class? What, what you said? Class was. She said classes. Diction, <laughs> accent, education, clothes, and then money. Is the well, this see, and this is <laughs> see, this is the to me what is really the insidious part of the, of the project of these of the of the current what I call Black Hollywood, right? This is all about social mobility and justifying social mobility within the capitalist context. They're all trying to give themselves a narrative for why their pursuits under this under the capitalist form. Are okay, and also why we black people should get behind it, right? Why we should get behind it, and and because one of the things that struck me about Origin was this this idea that a kind of cosmopolitan existence makes you more elevated. So Wilkerson's husband was white, um, and one Jew specifically, and Jewish. Thank you for reminding me of that. Well, actually, not in the film. But I think in real life he's he doesn't think that guy who plays him in the film isn't Jewish. Is Jewish. Oh. But the, real, the husband I don't think really was. Oh, I don't know. Was, the the husband was southern. But they but they, they, they make it in, uh, uh, in the film. I the thought film, in the film he's supposed to be a Jew. That's the, supposed to be the, the guy who's he playing him it. is Jewish. But I think I don't think in real life he was. Oh, interesting. I, so I, I'm but not, it's, it's true. The whole cosmos. Wait, wait, wait. Thing. <laughs> yeah. But the character in the film. I thought was a Jew. You're no, saying, no. I'm just saying that the, the actor, actor, the actor who plays the husband, I thought he did. He does mention because I thought the Jewish. actor in real life was not a Jew. I thought he was. Yeah. Why do I think? Because he's like a, he's from Maryland. He's from. Yeah, yeah. You're right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. But in the film, 
you're, you're, you know, because they're trying to be, it, it is, it is this form, this kind of like, yeah, kind of cosmopolitanism. She's yeah. shown in these spaces. She says, when, when the whole thing with Trayvon Martin jumps off, what does she say? She says, you know, well, he, he says it's racist. He says, well, everything, you know, everything is racist everything dismissively. Is racist. Right. As who, like, who runs around saying everything is racist? No, because you're saying that, that wasn't a lynching. It wasn't, it was something like that. Like, yeah. Trayvon it's wasn't just, just really dismissing lynched. it. And like so she's got to come up with this, this yeah. theory and this cast, and which is kind of like, what, what did they say in science? The theory of everything? Right. It's but like, one of the other interesting things is in the film, she goes to no black scholars. Zero. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's all. It's she, all goes, she goes. She goes. She goes. She goes. She goes to zero black scholars. She does not investigate. And if anything, the one that she goes to, she she dismisses. And who's 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 dead Cox, right? Yeah, you that's know? in the, that's that's in the book. Right. It's not even that. that that's not. Yeah. So it's not. It's not in the film. Not even right in the film. Right. right. But like, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 conflating everything. The she just ignores. Right. She, she just ignores. Like, oh, but wars. then but then that becomes a directorial choice also by Duvernay to yeah. erase to erase black scholarship and then make black scholarship in this film an individual. Right. Right. Except when, when there's a trick. Well, it's I, th I think they do a little something more complicated because mm -hmm. they, they show what they do with black scholarship is put it in the 30s and 40s with the, with the couple in Germany. Right. Who mm -hmm. link up with the two with the white couple at yes. Harvard or wherever to do yeah. some study. Mm -hmm. But but it, that's what that's the liberal individualism, the foundation. Mm -hmm. And it's also University of Chicago. So have you looked at because this is the thing with uh, you know y'all you all two gonna say you know this brother's obsessed with the University of Chicago because <laughs> no, I appreciate what you said earlier. But, yeah, but, but the University of Chicago, right, set up by the Rockefellers, right? I mean this is a direct ruling class school, right? It's set up by the Rockefellers, period. Right. So what do they get into? One of the things they push the cast thing here. They also push this caste system thing, which is still controversial in India. Some there's a big debate in India about just what all of that means, right? They push that. They, of course, they're anti-class uh, analysis, anti-Marxism. Mm -hmm. They push the neoliberalism. Mm -hmm. And what else do they push? In sociology, you get William Judas Wilson and mm -hmm. the declining significance of race mm -hmm. in the 70s. And so it's like, you know, you're looking at this, it says, well, that's pretty neat. Y'all, y'all, y'all got, got, got kind of got it going on. You got everything going in a certain direction here. Right? And that's, but because the, the scholars back up the caste idea, which was really not thought up, uh, come, doesn't come really out of black sociology. So, but my, what, I, what I saw in what they were doing in the film is that, that by having the, the, it's, it's, a reduction. I took it this way, mm -hmm. as as someone admittedly uh, somewhat within Africana studies. I I took it as uh, a suppression of Black studies I agree. and a reduction of Black studies to these two scholars who team up with the two white scholars to produce some soft liberal. Yeah, I could see that. That's what I so so that way whether uh, you, when you mentioned. Uh, the, the directorial choice. Mm -hmm. You can you can avoid anything even Wilkerson would have done mentioning those th that that wing of study in mm -hmm. her work. You can just skip all over that, tell this nice yeah. little story, and then conclude as you want. And what's also and in, 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 in a way, though she never uh, Duvernay never overtly um, references any any intellectuals. She presents them like they're this secret intellectual class, <laughs> that as if every, that 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 they're the legitimate. Thus, anything else would be seen as illegitimate, mm -hmm. right? So she's by by she's doing um, uh, 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 selection by omission, right? She's omitting a, a, a history and selecting. Now, this is the real intellectual class that you should have been you sh you should have been paying attention to, mm -hmm. right? And they've been kept from you. And what's kind of funky is this kind of hostility that you know when the the, the, the two the, when 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 they go and they go to the south they have to be secretive and they're not you know there's like kind of a hostility and suspiciousness towards them. Yeah, they got and a code switch. Got a code switch with, with their, their own people. Own people. Right, right, and right, right, and right, right. it's 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 
Mm-hmm. It also adds to another thing in the film that I <laughs> that I found to be um, artistically the most insidious part of the film is this 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 idea of creating everyday people's worth through pretending to be some kind of superhero. I'm gonna. I'm, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't make this quote. I got this off Letterbox. Someone. There's. This is a motif they use in the film of where she um, re envisions, you know, Trayvon at the end and and and, 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 and the scholars. And someone said it was uh, like uh, it was uh, Isabel Wilkerson getting the Force Ghost. <laughs> in Star Wars, right? They came back, you know, to kind of nod or give her. But there's this way that these kind of superhero, not uh, you know, narratives and superheroes, which have very, you know, authoritarian, even totalitarian, you know, uh, uh, re envisionings now. This kind of way that superheroes have been used now, and they've been you know, deployed into popular movies. It, it's this, you know, they become. Uh, it's an acceptance of the Watchmen. Right of war in this case the watch woman, <laughs> right? You're we have to accept that we need these people. You know we that you know the, it was benevolent lies. It was benevolent uh, secrecy, right? So that if these were being secretive, you know if these groups were, were being secretive in the corner, it was for your good. Don't worry, you know you know if they were doing these things, they were you know. So it becomes it, it becomes this this defense of the elite. And this this reasoning of the elite, you know, and it, it's a it's a noble saying, you know, these are all noble lies, these are all noble secrets, and it's it's just part. It, what I find to be so funky about it all is this does not break with traditional Hollywood at all, um, but it breaks with the black cinematic tradition, which which was for a long time through things like the Ellie Rebellion and. Filmmakers like Wendell Harris and Bill Gunn and uh, Kathleen Collins look realizing that a black black cinematic expression cannot be done within that format, and now Black Hollywood has totally bought into that format, which is a format that is you know carried on the project of, of a very imperial um, dominant America you know is ex- is the exceptional country narrative, and we've now. Is the way Black Hollywood has taken it into their bones and, and, and are reproducing it. And also, as the last thing I'll say is, they're doing it as this is our political action, right? This is a political action. Think about think about Rustin and how and how they they market these films. They market these films as it is your political like obligation to support these works. Well, what, what, what's her name? Um, yeah, I was. What, 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 uh, what's her name? When who was it who said if you don't watch um, Shirley? Was it Shirley? One of the. I thought it was also the 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 the, the, the um, one of the Netflix African Queen films. What was it? Oh, the Woman King. The Woman King. Yes. Somebody, somebody said if you don't go see this, I think one, I think what's her name said if um, you don't go see this. Viola Davis. Yeah, like you're not supporting black women. Like if you don't go see this, you don't mm-hmm. support black women. It's mm-hmm. like wow, wow. I was on I was on another panel. This this um, uh, uh, white activist writer said that all the activists need to see the rest of the film. And I just I said, look, man, I was in a Philip Randolph, which was super set up by Randolph with George Meany for Rustin. I said, no, 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 no. I know all sorts of Rustin, so you leave that alone, all right? This, you know, he chilled stuff out. You know, I mean, he went down there to the NAACP and tried to get them to get rid of Herbert Hill on the behest of George Meany because Herbert Hill was writing articles exposing racism within the unions. So I said, no, 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 and you know, anti-radical, anti-communist. I mean, mm-hmm. you no, know, I'm sorry. I mean, and he's pacifist. Yet you, 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 here you are. You end up supporting. Yeah, I, I don't. Israel, I don't right, need right. to. Yeah, I support Israel. Israel. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't need to get all into that. But there's another historical omission. It's, it's, a, a, it's a mentioned in the book. But Aunt Bedkar and Du Bois had a con- had a brief correspondence. Mm-hmm. And that is not in the uh, movie. Don't get back to the whole thing of black scholarship and everything. Mm-hmm. So you know, foremost black sociologists, and just just not uh, mentioned in the movie. They had they were just two letters. You can read them uh, online if you want. You know, they're they're actually there. And um, all. And the, but the thing with that bed car, it kind of shows him, you know, like bopping through Harlem, even though that was before Harlem was 
just before the Harlem Renaissance. He was gone from New York by 1916. And you, you know, you get sort of kind of right, writing stuff. You show him being an intellectual sitting in a thing, and it's kind of like, okay, but you, and you don't get too much, really. And, but then you have the Dalits come in, and then they explain, you know, what he's uh, um, about, and you're supposed to take it. But the, the other thing with that big car, the Dalits, you know, one writer from India called the book Orientalist. Mm. Because of the whole thing, you know, it's in the book, it's in the movie. Aaron Dottie Roy says this, and the Dalits okay. say this. You get into a political thing. I do not want to get into this because you get into a lot of name calling. But the thing is, is that the caste system is seen as this ancient millennium old system that has just gone on and on. It's the worst system of oppression in the world, sort of timeless. And it's been called out. It says, well, this is an Orientalist rhetoric you're using. That's what the Orientalist and the missionary said in the anti-Hinduism. And it's, so it's, and there's, there's a lot of vituperative back and forth about how caste developed, how it came, to, and just what it, it says, is there really a caste system as the way we think of a system, right? Like there was a Jim Crow system, right? The Nazis set up a system. But if you went, I mean, I've looked at India and I'm like, something's going on here. I, I just don't kind of get it. I mean, it's really, you know, I mean, is this like, are these guilds? And you know, and then the other thing is, and Bedkar says it wasn't racial. I just say I, you know, I, I'll just leave that alone. It's very, it's not as cut and dry as is is made to appear, you know, because she lets the the Dalit activists uh, speak for themselves. And because again, the, 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 there's no the the intent is not to clarify the history, it's not to uh, expose audiences to radical and suppressed analyses. So there's the, the, all these common threads, whether it's through Ava's or the other film I know we were planning to discuss that I think, to me, you kind of gave a perfect segue to. We're not supposed to get, uh, uh, we're never meant to be introduced or given uh, a fair, uh, coverage of anything involving obviously socialism, various forms of nationalism, armed struggle, all of these things are meant to be all erased as if they were never considered, engaged, uh, all so that we can conclude is I think, and this is where I, I'll, if I can perform this segue, that, that where, um, where I needed to be checked on my own damn platform by this dude over here because I fell into my own fell fell afoul of my own claimed analysis. So I'm I'm uh, wanting to, to 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 simplify all these other brilliant uh, and older forms of, of thought on this to to and pay tribute to my buddy Vernon and develop this Vernon philosophy of black media avoidance. The point of which is that no one no oppressed group should ever look to find itself in. in uh, the, 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 the colonized media environment because uh, it's always a misrepresentation of whatever it claims to be. So I go see American fiction and all they had to do, all they had to do is put a light-skinned, balding, <laughs> bearded, chubbying, you know, uh, uh, a writer lamenting his career. And I was in there like, ah. Oh. God, they got my whole life on the screen. It was like they made my movie and it was a wrap. I go home, get on my little YouTube. Everybody, black people, you got to see this film. They finally fucked up and made a, let a film through that we can appreciate. I said, I even said, you owe it to yourself to get this little bit of pleasure in 90 minutes from these usually horrific. Da, 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 da. Get off, get off the camera feeling good about myself. Like, I just did a good thing, saw a great movie. I don't know, was it like a day or two? And two mates sends me an email politely. No, brother, I think you might be. <laughs> Reject your. And, and, and the, 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 I don't remember exactly what you wrote, but the, 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 the thread that I've now come to see very clearly in, in subsequent views and discussions with you is that 
that to your point of a minute ago, the film is the goal of the film, at least as I interpret it, is to justify the black bourgeoisie's treachery. And so we're supposed to see the film and identify, see myself in the film, and then say to myself, so when you perform in your own life the treachery against your people and your community and your militant struggles and all this, you should be okay with that because look at how hard, look at the movie, shows you how difficult it is for the black bourgeoisie to do anything. We're set up so you shouldn't judge negatively anyone from the black middle class who who says, I'm doing, I'm making my millions for you. Mm -hmm. When you see me walking on the red carpet, see yourself <laughs> and walk with me in the victory. You know what I'm saying? No, you can't taste the champagne. You can't, <laughs> the truffles darn, you ain't gonna taste it. But just see me. Yeah. And yeah, and then, and then I do really think, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's all of it is meant to walk us away from all those radical isms we should be engaging on a more uh, sustained basis. So that's what I've, always, I've really appreciated about our evolving uh, uh, discussions. And it's, it, it's important, now I'll stop here, to be in these kinds of spaces, building with these kinds of people, because even when you think you got it, you don't got it. Not by yourself. American fiction, yeah. Okay, you right. Did anyone read the book? I read it because yeah, of it. I read, because because of it. Yeah. Yeah, I read, I read the book um, Wow, so 20 years ago, I was, yeah. and I, my thing was like, I know that there are, not, there are things in this book that are not going to be on that screen. Yeah. And it definitely, uh, mm -hmm. definitely but this is, you should, I mean, first of all, it's great writer in general. Great writer. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I have just one last thing, you know, a couple last things with the DuVernay, mm -hmm. that Star Trek, I had to look that up. Mm -hmm. It's a Where's Star Trek thing. And I said, my God. <laughs> I said, my God, that's so, you know, because yeah, at the end of the film that happens. I thought it was kind of like this aestheticized thing. I mean, it, it still is. It is, it, is, it, is, it is an aestheticized thing. But, but I thought she's but, borrowing, you know, she's yeah, totally she's a, borrowing from this. I like, thought, I thought it was like at the Yankees when you hit the home run, you know, you go Feel to the dreams. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so they all come out, but yeah, because it seemed with all the dead come out and they're like saying, yeah, you know, you got us right. You did the right Great job. You know, it's, yeah. it, I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's, also, it's Disgusting. He takes off the hood. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. Yeah, it's really. It's, it's really. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll bring that back up when I want to talk to you. There's something about was, that. The one the one last mm -hmm. thing. The other thing I'm you know that you mentioned online was the use of the Kodak stuff. Oh yeah, yeah the film, film the film stuff. And yes. But this and this will really put me off of looking at that movie. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute. That's the deep south. That's the concentration camp. That's the slave ship. Why does it look so damn beautiful? I mean, what is this the Depression South? It doesn't look like the Depression South right. ever. No. Right? I'm like, what, you know, like, what is it? And so, I mean, I mean what, this, 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 old, this aestheticizing all this pain and suffering. Well, what you're like, getting to is, is a long, you know, argument in film. I mean, there's a, there's a film, oh God, uh, it's Gio Pentecarbo's first film. Um, Capo, about the Holocaust, um, and uh, it, it, it's, it's a film with uh, starring uh, Susan Strasberg, the Strasberg's daughter, and it's about a young Jewish woman who gets, um, you know, they cut off her hair and they hide her as a, as a, as a non, as a non-Jew, um, uh, and she becomes a, a capo, right? So she's, you know, becoming the, one, one of the leaders in the concentration camp. And there's a scene in the film where they aestheticize the murdering of one of the concentration camp. And then Jacques Rivette, the, the, the well-known Marxist um, theorist, detested it. He detested this, 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 this aestheticized murdering of a Jewish person in the concentration camp. And he said, this is the most reprehensible thing I've ever seen. And, and, and it's funny, Project Kevin would never, who would later on later made film at the Battle of Algiers, um, Burn. If you look at his films, they don't look like that at the, after that. When he got into the kind of like left, more, more like, more like left wing work, when he, yeah. after Capo, he became a very different filmmaker. I, I, my theory, he took Rivette's criticism to heart. So much that, I mean, not, not to go too much in direction, when he did this on Bulgaro about the, uh, the ETA, um, 
uh, people in um, <laughs> in Bosque country and depicted the murdering of, of Franco's number two. That film has been suppressed. Like no one, no one, no one can, no one even even know where that movie exists. It's, it's a phenomenal film, and it's a, it's about it's legitimizing our struggle of the Bosque people in, in, in Spain, and it's been, it's, been, it's, been, it's been completely shut out of history. No one, no one talks about it. It was the last film we ever made, and no one... Um, but yes, this, you're, you're right, though. This, this aestheticized um, way of depicting these things is a long tradition. I mean, it, it goes back to Walter Benjamin, the aestheticization, the aestheticization of politics, right? The aesthetization of politics. They'll allow you to create some kind of expression, right? And then you can wallow in it. And then it brings in another thing that I, I think is a good segue back to what, what Jerry was talking about. You can express how you feel, right? As long as you don't go out on the street and, you know, strike and organize and, or take up arms. You know, the, the, they're totally fine with that. But what Jerry brings up with American fiction, I think is really important. And even with origin, you can do it is, 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 is why I always feel like you have to be suspicious of catharsis. You know, I go back to Augusto Boal, theater of the oppressed. He was always very suspicious of catharsis. There's this idea, when I was in theater school, I was always taught that catharsis was this inherent good. But it took a teacher I had to say, to ask me, when Nazis watched Triumph of Will, they, they, did they not have cathartic experiences? Mm -hmm. Wait, but bring that down. Why, why would that film do that? What's in that film? Because about e emotional connection, Triumph of Will, pride, all of, you know, seeing yourself. Riefenstahl was, you know, um, very effective in being able to connect with the people and create a narrative, right? I mean, that's film. Film is an obstruction, right? It's, it's, a, look, it's, it's a screen, right? You're not getting a 360 view. There's always going to be things you would omit, right? It's, it's, it's part of it. It is part of it. it. It makes it beautiful and also potentially very insidious, right? It's always going to be an obstruction. So you have to be suspicious of catharsis. Brecht was also very suspicious of it as well. That's why he, he was also very much, you know, suspicious of empathy, as empathy as a tool for film. Uh, he said Brecht was always very big on, you can't escape empathy, right? And it's, people are going to empathize, but to make empathy the, he was he, the, the driving force of how you do your dramatics, he was, he was very cautious of, because he felt it actually wasn't enough to have some kind of dialectic political read Around film, uh, around a film, um, around a um, for him a theatrical piece, a dramatic piece, um, and that's the thing. I think it, we've been taught that if we feel or we have a cathartic moment watching something, that's the evidence that it's good for us. But we are socialized in this world in, in many ways, and we have to <laughs> we have to accept that, right? Like you know, there's a lot of things. Uh, that happens to us ideologically in this world. And, you know, filmmakers and media specialists are very good at manipulating that, right? And getting us to buy into things, you know, that I think if we think more clear, sometimes we go, oh, I, I don't accept that. That's, that's really bad, right? You know, but you, you, they, they use these tools to get us to buy into anything. They plan our emotions, which is for something like American fiction, which, you know, it's, it's a shame because Erasure is a book um, that is very much an, an, a, an analysis of black bourgeoisie existence and turns it into American fiction, which becomes a... American fiction. American <laughs> fiction, a defense of black bourgeoisie existence and pursuit. So it's part of that same project's origin. I don't know if you want to know. Thing is, um, I remember since I, I, you know, worked in uh, bookstores, right? And I've had a couple of. There's that scene where he comes into the bookstore, and you know he takes his books and everything. <laughs> I, now I've never had a, a black author do that, but I have been in situations kind of like that, or had it brought up to uh, to me and everything, and. Um, you know, with fiction, if you have a store where you have, you could have things sections. I mean, some bookstores do section out fiction by, you know, they'll have 
Afro American and African, mm -hmm. and they'll section it like that. So that's not that's not an issue. Most of them just it's just fiction. But when it comes to Afro American studies, you know, you kind of have to. Sometimes you have to fight. You know, <laughs> fight with Mandarin and everything. Because I've asked God, and it gets down to this. I said, well. You know, do, do, who do you want to read your books? I say, well, because what will what'll happen? I said, you want me to put your book in American history? He says, well, two things are going to happen. One thing, you know, I mean, your people aren't going to read your book because they're not going to, they're not, they know, oh, wait, you go through American history and find, find the book. You know, I said, okay, whatever. But, you know, and you, the sales are going to go down. The sales are going to go down, period. So, you know, there should be like Afro-American studies, if, if that's what the book is about, you know, you, you, you put it there. With fiction, it's a little different, but I've had that sort of thing where you kind of get, you know, the universalism, you know, um, uh, uh, being black is gonna, you know, tank my sales, that kind of thing, or the sort of elevated sort of thing where, you know, the only thing about the book what does he say? You know, black is, is the ink. Is the ink yeah. right on the, on the page? You know, and it's kind of like, well, okay, you know, you're black, you can write about anything, but sometimes it's like, yeah, I mean, I mean, with germ, you know, a lot of people they just go, don't go through all those conniptions. But one thing, you know, that I thought is kind of there, you know. It was something like I said, it's something in this movie, you know, that's kind of there, but they don't really deal with it, really. Because you have this family, right? And they're like really super overachievers, right? But they're a mess, right? The father's killed himself. Mm -hmm. The mother has a dementia. They're they're all divorced or not? You know, the the, the sister drops dead. You know, and she's divorced. The son is unseen. The yeah, son is unseen. Son is unseen. Like there's all this. There's all this. Yeah. You know, and I'm looking at this. and it says, "There's something here." And it says, "I'm wondering if this is a case of sort of like this John Henryism, <laughs> except the film can't really deal with a real issue." Where, because I don't know how many of you have done this, I have done it, you know, where you are just going to be better than any other, usually white worker or anything, you know, and you're going to just do this. So sometimes you're just really pissed off, and so you're just going to be better than anyone else, you know, and it just gets into this thing you get into. And you, can, and you also kind of like work off the anger and that kind of stuff. And I kind of wonder if this film kind of, they, they didn't have the courage to really even confront it. And sometimes I wonder if, if that's also true with um, Origin, right? Where she goes through all this stuff and she soldiers on and writes this book. And, you know, I wonder if that's the same, you, you, you have to like do this sort of hyper achievement to get through and feel legitimate or whatever. See, this is where being mixed has its place. Let me just step in there. Because it's the proximity to whiteness that we need to overcome the mythology of whiteness as a standard to repeat, to, to aspire, to which to aspire. And I say, so my, I'm saying all this thing. For, ever since I was a kid, when my mother showed me the John Henry story, immediately I was like, fuck that. Yeah. Okay. Fuck that standard. I'm gonna kill myself to prove myself that he's like, nah, damn that. That's and immediately, bullshit. and from there, even as a kid, the, the ethic in me is if somebody got this, if, if anybody gonna die, it ain't gonna be me by my own hand. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> or it ain't gonna be me killing myself to work for you. <laughs> if death is on the table, if, men, if there's a buffet table you know, of, of options, and death is on there. That's not, not, not mine. <laughs> that's not. I'm not self-selecting that and then holding that up. So, so I'm just saying that as a joke. Like, okay. No, no. So, but I, no, I know that the John Henryism is real. I was just making. I just want to. I just want to make a whole joke. <laughs> but, I, but, but it is not. But it is true that I mean I do. I, I, to the that these films, to 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 the extent that I'm following your point, these films do encourage a white standard mm -hmm. being maintained that black families are only uh, 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 um, 
valuable to the extent that they measure up to that white standard. It, it, it was a, the, the second time I watched it with my other homeboy so that I could catch him up to your analysis because he was still lagging where I was initially. And I was like, now we're going to watch this again. <laughs> And the scene where the sister is, she's, she's like a cigarette smoker and she dies. Mm -hmm. What I wanted, what I said to him, what I would have wanted the, the, the movie, a, a, a movie more along, doing more of what we would like maybe to see it do, is to make that point more clear. She's, she, even in her, because what was she, a doctor? Yeah, she's even doctor. her black bourgeoisie state, having succeeded in all the black capitalist fantasy, she's still a stressed out cigarette smoker who dies early. Right. Mm -hmm. And the film doesn't really do anything with that. It seems that's, that by the end of the film, we're supposed to just come back to, this is why we should feel OK about whatever choice this guy makes, because he, he lost his sister, and this one, you know, and, and he's, oh, you know. And, and that critique of the black bourgeoisie is never yeah, well, made yeah. available to us. Yeah. Yeah, um, they never, yeah, they never, that's what I'm saying. Like, the film doesn't really yeah. go there and say, like, they're sort of, um, Casualties of this. They also never really get into the um, the real pu problem with the publishing uh, industry, which is well, they're not. Well, they're also just not honest about what the publish publishing industry is, yeah. is 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 today. I mean, there is a, a black bourgeois narrative that's actually very popular in the publishing industry for the you would say the better part of the, of the 10, 10, 15 years. I mean, my good friend, uh, Jason England, probably wrote to the most um, known negative take down of American fiction. He mentions that. He says, this is, this is a, I mean, in, in, in the world of Zadie Smith, American fiction just becomes completely fictional. It, it, it's, it's, just not, it's just not real. Um, and it's interesting that like, you, you were saying something about um, a couple things. That scene in the bookstore always kind of, to me, shows the, this is, this is the problem with American films, Hollywood films in general, is they look to set a narrative of the world as pretty singular. I would actually have no problem depicting a scene where this writer goes in there and has this reaction. But he's never challenged. He's never challenged by anyone in the film of truly, why do you have this distaste for you being called black? Right. A black writer. I have no problem. There, I'm sure there are people like that, but there is never the challenge. And the film, because the film looks to just be a defense. And the 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 another thing of the American fiction is is the is the, is the straw manning of black poor people, right? Who live in this in this kind of you know you know cloud space in the film, right? And which is seems to be a um, you know it, it, it's a it feels like it, I I take it as I don't know what they're saying or doing, but I experience it as this this. Uh, Another version of black poor people are the problem. Even because look at them, you know they're being depicted. Look how they're being. You know, look look how they're taking shit from us. They want us to depict black. It's pathologizing, pathologizing black poverty once again, right? And it's weird because then the, the film says shows you what how you shouldn't depict black people. But then they actually give you how you should depict black people. And how you should depict black people is, looks like a Lifetime movie, <laughs> a Hallmark movie, right? They tuned in the, the, the music. The music was very, you know, you know, it had a nice kind of lightness to it. The shot selections were very, were very um, tame, right? Easy, uh, you know, getting sympathetic and empathetic, warm, warm coloring were very, you know, you know, very pungent, you know, the, the colors and things like that, really focusing on faces and, 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 and deep emotional moments. And it, the, 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 the filmmaker, Court Jefferson, and if you watch his interviews, I, I, he, he's, he's very transparent in his want to make blackness as American normalized as possible. He thinks that is the project, right? That is what the project needs to be. Yeah. There's also that there are um, 
No, she, I mean, there's a sister, she's like the help, and then she's Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like... Which in the book is really different. Mm -hmm. And the book, I mean, that's probably one of the better parts of the book, is this, is this class analysis of, of you know, of, of, of the hostilities of, of a domestic, that a domestic worker will face. In any in any kind of situation, whether it's white and black, black and black, whatever, you know, and and the film makes it into this. She was just part of the family. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, she. In fact, you know, I mean, I hope nobody takes this the wrong way, but she at the at the end, right? There's this conflict, and right. she almost she. It's almost like a mammy thing when she heals the family. Yeah. And she's all everybody. We're all family here. You yeah. all come in, and it's like boom, everything's magic. I said. Wow, this that's you know, no, it's completely that the magic Negro within a black film, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Wild. it's kind of yeah, that's that's very wild. Wild. I think thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, anybody have any comments, First, questions, 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 comments? Can you keep going? Yeah, Kyle, Kyle. Yes. Yeah, I'm really interested in like the way that y'all were talking about kind of like different tactics and structures within film and theater mm -hmm. and like empathy and how they elicit different responses or, or allow filmmakers to manipulate emotions in different ways. Um, and I was just thinking, oh, this isn't really a question, it's just something that I'd, I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on, about like kind of movies, I'm thinking specifically maybe about like kids' movies that are like really relying on like allegories in order to make political points that are really superficial and incomplete. And one of them that came to mind was like Elemental. I don't know if y'all saw I'll Elemental. It, it was just like, it was, it was, it was an allegory of kind of like um, first generation immigrants, but told through the, these characters. It was like, there was the fire people and the water people and like the air people. And like, they're all just like actual elements. They're not humans, it's <laughs> like, like a water droplet or like a, a fire. Um, and, and ultimately, the, they try to they they really stretch this this uh, this metaphor really hard. I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't go well for them. Um, but but it it strikes me how many of these kind of movies are out there, or 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 plays, or just pieces of media that are like trying to make some kind of political point using an allegory, and then how that gets lost on people, or how. It maybe takes uh, like a political narrative and then pacifies it, takes the teeth out of it, makes it uh, palatable, makes it mainstream. Um, I don't know, and, and with the, the very same sort of like cathartic endings. I don't know, I'm just interested to know what y'all uh, think about that. I mean, we just, our, our children just sort of aged out of all those films, so I'm, but so up, up until even that one, we've seen a lot of it. And what they what they clearly do uh, is is uh, it's it's another version of I keep using this guy Chris Mott's woke Imperium idea. They they, they they okay, we know there are problems with race, class, gender, with the environment, with teen angsts, you know, hormones. So we're just going to present them in ways that uh, will become non-threatening and will always assure that the, 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 the narrative concludes with some uh, vaguely liberal uh, result and uh, uh, with the clear goal of setting that intellectual agenda for children to follow going. I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's really obvious as a parent watching them. Uh, and the difficulty is, is A, teaching it to your own or any other children or, or having, you know, having them tease out. Um, and I'm known for stopping movies to give lectures in between. <laughs> Scenes and something would happen. I'd be like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You know, it's going too far. My kids be like, oh, damn, damn. But you have to, uh, because on the one hand, we're not. Again, I, I admit we weren't as as hardcore as to fully deny access. So the point was, we're going to watch and then have this ongoing conversation. But uh, uh, but I think that, anyway, I think. There is a clear intent to, to set a course, and we have to uh, be more vigilant and aggressive. Yeah. I mean, as a, as a recent parent of, of a six-month-old daughter, this is something that's become increasingly of my interest, to be honest with you. Um, 
and then I've, I've my curiosity um, has now gone to how we as people who have political reads need to maybe step into that arena in creating work um, that speaks to, 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 to the development of children. Um, because yes, it, it, they are instructional. I mean, there's a, there's a great book, if you're ever um, interested in visual language, called The Visual Story. I teach it, and it's, a, it's about uh, it's by a man named Bruce Block, he was a professor at USC, um, and he teaches just really the, 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 the science of visual language via cameras, right? Which is, a lot of his bar is borrowed from painting, as you know, the depth and everything, so they kind of got those ideas, but then cinema, and then, and then, and then photography, still photography, but then you get into motion pictures, different, some different rules apply. And what, what Block exposes in the book very well it's not a political book, but it's a it's a it's a, it's a descriptive book of how uh, perception is created. What he exposes is the subject the suggestive nature of frame, where you put things in frame, spatial relationships, all of these things through through color. I mean, uh, how we're being socialized via color. I mean, there is no thing as the color wheel. Color wheel is a socialized creation. So, so color becomes a social perception for us. How we perceive, you know, red is this, blue is this, so forth and so on. And if you apply what you do from that book and you look at children's programming, um, you realize the programming that goes into it. Um, and like I said, we could be here with any other technique, we could be here forever. You know, it's a, it's a, Can I just go ahead. quickly, just, just, I kind of forgot one, you just remind me, uh, one, how to read Donald Duck. Yeah, oh, yeah. there's a great one, yes. Yeah, I still I see you yeah. it all the time. And, and, uh, <laughs> I've done that same thing. I've stopped the movie and had my kids look at look at how they shot this, so that the that the that the the, the, the the person in power is framed, so that they're looking. You know, you have to look at it. And then I also say to them, and I encourage them, for all of us. I use it, try to, except for American Fiction, I got, got caught on that one. But when, when, <laughs> whenever you feel an emotion, I'll say this to my children too. The, you, Whenever you see a movie and you start to feel an emotion, recognize that that's by design. Yeah. That that very talented people have worked very hard to elicit that. You know, I've even stopped the thing. Look, look at look at we were looking at The Shining, and I was like, look at the pantry. He's even, look at the, the look at how you even see the labels on the cans, and there's reasons that 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 what's his name? What's his name? Jack. No, there's who did the director? Kubrick. Kubrick. There's reasons he put this there. So everything is meticulous. And then we even watch the credits. Mm -hmm. Make your children watch the whole, sit there and watch yeah. the scroll of all the people who have worked on every aspect of this motherfucking <laughs> film. And this is why every single thing in it. So that's the only, these are just small defense mechanism tactics I've been trying to yeah. do. To, to. But because I also want, you know, because a lot of film, um, and television too, it's, a lot of it's kind of like what to do, how to conform, and how not to do things, and it teaches these lessons. Right. But, it, but one thing, uh, you know, I've noticed has kind of gotten under the radar, um, and even with these, what we, these films like we've talked about today, but even with spectacularly uh, successful films with involved black people, it's like I know there's all this, all this black family destruction, right? You look at the um, Black Panther films, and by the end of the second one, it's like, who's left, right? And it's just, it's just, it's just sort of just done. Just the colonizers, <laughs> because the black and brown folks, they right? fight each other. It's just done. With the, with, um, that revolution thing is that good. With American <laughs> fiction, American fiction, you know, you have this, you know, you have this family and it's clearly, they're in bad shape. You know, a couple of people already, you know, one's dead off screen, one's missing, one dies off screen. And um, with the origin, I mean, this woman loses a whole yes. thing in the family. It's like, you know, like, like what is it? With the Creed films, right, with Michael B. Jordan, right? 
that's another one. You look at all the films. I mean, you know, his father's missing, and then by the end, his mother's gone, and you know, it's the like the first scene in the first Creed yeah. film is the mother coming to visit him locked up. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's all this black, it's all this um black family. <laughs> well, that's and, 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 but that's directly start. I mean, not to go on a rabbit hole. The way black film is treated now is very much predicated on how women's film was treated in the code era. These kinds of ideas of women, they go through all this, white women will go through all this suffering. You know, films like, um, what's, the, what's the big Joan Crawford one? I'm gonna forget, uh, oh my God. You know, her, Joan, Joan Crawford's films. No, Mildred, Mildred Pierce. Mildred Pierce, right, Mildred Pierce and, um, the other big class one was the woman, and she she did, uh, Montgomery Clift is the poor man who, who falls in love with her. From um, here, um, you know, from, it's, it's not, you know, it's not from here. It's no, 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 no. Like the narrative tailors it. Yeah, like um, M Montgomery Clift is this poor man, and she's like a rich, successful woman, but he, you know, he he manipulates her, and you know, she loses everything, but she becomes a strong woman in the end. So this this it, it's taking the same approach that they did to women's films, and which is really the birth of melodrama in cinema, um, went through women's films. These ideas of virtue, going back to the virtuous sufferer, right? This, this idea of virtuous suffering. And and yeah, I mean, but yeah, you, you had your hand up? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I wanted to thank you for the American fiction. I thought it was crazy when I was watching it. But even after watching it, Commentary on it is mm -hmm. is very like oh, one of us guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There's no like commentary on like mm -hmm. yeah, there's no, no like obvious mm -hmm. like unless you get like the third thing to Google where it's like You're right. So that was also like part of why I felt like am I wrong? Maybe maybe this is the way we should be seeing this film as like anyway. Yeah. Um but then my question was around you mentioned um Empathy as a tool of manipulation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I guess I guess my question is around um, propaganda. Yeah. My question is around propaganda and when is can it be necessary? When can you use it as a strategy? Because here in the analysis of these films, specifically these like Ava and, mm -hmm. and American fiction. You see the the, the, part, the near the near the real project. Yeah. You criticize. You can see that this is this is enforcing and attention that project. Mm -hmm. Um. But what do you think about propaganda in the other way? Yeah. That, well, what's wrong with the information? <laughs> well, here's what here's what here's what I, I think that's a phenomenal question, and it's actually a question I think that many artists on the left have dealt with and, and, and disagreed upon. It's, you know, it's not necessarily a... One of the thoughts that I've seen um, through various people from, from Brecht, even so, you know, Baraka adopted this at a certain point in the early 70s, like by slave ship, was that if you wrap people up too much in their emotion, they're not going to be able to dialectically um, be even able to self-criticize, right, and, and 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 analyze the situation in front of them, right? Um, do you want to just make a spectator, or do you want to make an interlocutor? That's that's Boal's big thing, right? That's where he went to the theater of the press. He felt the idea of the spectator becomes this hierarchical thing where it becomes a dictation. Right, so you actually will liberate people if you make them an interlocutor in some way in this in this, in this situation. Is, is it answer, answer your question? I mean, probably not completely, right? Uh, You're asking more about, it, but when 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 can it be used? How or? would it be look? How would it look? What are tools? What should one do in this? Because if you don't want to use empathy, mm -hmm. oh, what how tools? How do you make it? Mm -hmm. How do you make cinema? Well, I think like in a in a cinematic in a cinematic kind of way, one of the one of the biggest criticisms of modern cinema has become that it's too focused on an individual. You're following an individual, right? And um, and uh, that's one criticism. Another one is stock selection. Um, the idea of you know one of the I think the, the the powerful things about someone like Glover Roach if you watch him he 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 used close ups very very sparingly, right? If you look at American film close ups are all the rage, 
you become close, right? You, be, you get invested, enveloped into their emotions to the point where the close-up is almost making you them, right? So you're wrapped up in emotion and you're not being able to do any kind of analysis. Well, someone like Rocha, who was a Marxist, a uh, Brazil, great Brazilian filmmaker, black guy, white devil, you should definitely check out his work, Landscape showing the showing using space and, and frame to show the, the, the spatial relationships, right? And there's a great scene in Black God, White Devil where um, the the man fights and he, he kills uh, the landowner. And it's, it, it happens first in this wide shot so you can see the social relation, right? And then he uses the close up to kind of show his crisis because that's the crisis you as an under as a audience must understand like what do I like what do I have to do now like do I stay do I leave right so he uses them very very carefully so in, in cinema it's it's a matter of frame and, and the techniques that are that are within it I mean and you know Brecht when he was in theater was a, it was about the text and and the, the relationships you know not going into realism he was also big into distancing so so distancing effects is another thing not doing things in the present moment creating you know distances away so you can you're not wrapped up in the in, in the current period you're you're observing the past and then you're making those links between oh this reminds me of now so there's a lot I mean, there's a lot of, there there is a there is a lot of different ways you know but, um, but, go ahead but I, when I walked in I might have missed mm -hmm. a key point or part of your question but what I, from what I heard there's something that you said in our discussions that that I struggle that adds to the struggle that I'm I'm already having which is we have to create among our audiences an ability to see and a willingness to see black film and be delivered in ways we're not trained to see them. Like yeah. we can't expect it to look like yeah. a Wakanda or whatever. It's not going to look like that. And, and this, so adding to the struggle that I have is when I hear your question about the, the sort of positive propaganda is for me, it's not just the ability to create it and having the political education to, to develop it, but how is it going to be seen? Mm -hmm. And then once it is, how will it be interpreted? So the film you just mentioned, when you said you saw it earlier, and I'm like, well, how did you see it? It's like, well, it's in a f one film, one theater here in New York. Mm -hmm. The rest of us aren't going to be able to hear it. So, so I keep being stuck. I, I, in, this is why I'm always frustrated in, in, in public space where there's documentation, how to, you know, is is that I do think, so for instance, in the documentary McLuhan's Wake about Marshall McLuhan, there's a part where they're talking about his analysis of the media environment using uh, uh, Shakespeare's the, All the World's a Stage, we're all merely players, we're all just playing our role that has been assigned us. And the only way to break the role, according to McLuhan, is or well, one way people are encouraged to see breaking that role is what is defined as terrorism. Yeah. That the only way for them, for as he describes it, the terrorists to shock their way into the consciousness of an audience is to blow something up essentially. Mm -hmm. So, not wanting to be confused again in public and on some devices here, that I, I don't, I'm not advocating that, but I am suggesting that in terms of how we. We have to find new ways of either reducing the target audience in terms of size and saying we're only target, you know, Glenn Ford was mentioned earlier, I'm a big supporter of his way, like I'm not, what he used to say, I'm not creating journalism for the masses, I'm trying to target a specific group to inspire them to do what they need to do. That's what I think we need to think of. We're not going to create the next blockbuster, mm -hmm. and we're not going to have the bestseller, and we're not going to have the next viral. How are we going to create something that's going to hit a certain level of an audience in a way that's going to move them to magnify? Because at the end of the day, dominant culture is a reflection of dominant political power. We don't have it, so we're never going to we're never going to have a th movie opening in thousands of theaters. Uh, that's reflecting the politics we want to see. So it's, in, it's not that I don't agree. I, I look at the, the work that you personally do, and I, I wonder how you juxtapose that because a platform that you had, if if it existed when the Daughters of the Dust came out or Sankofa, all of those like-minded people are meeting at Black Power Media. So it's nothing to have. Now Julie Dash comes to your audience, and now this is sort of the world stage where this film is getting shown, and now there's other networks. So 
maybe it's not, you know, you're not going to get to an AMC, but if you get to 100, 150, 200 global organizations that are all participating in media projects like yourself are doing, that, that's the point. Oh, I, so I'm not, again, I'm not trying to diminish mine or any right. of us work. I'm trying to, but, 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 but we have to be realistic. Right. Mm -hmm. The next Hollywood Avengers, whatever equivalent, is going to reach amounts of audiences in ways even at the height. We're not going. We're just not going to reach them. I think we got to be okay with that. I think. Well, I'm saying we. Yeah. Do. That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying that we just have to work with that. That's all I mean. That's yeah, I mean. I mean, look, one of the one of the things that I think that's been lost in. Um, well, this is to me a, a couple of things. I think there's a. One of my, I think, my challenges with the left is the conversations around culture and how culture plays a role in leftist politics. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, and you know, this is one of the things I'm happy with me and Jared's conversations is, is that we, we, we've come to this conclusion that there needs to be a stronger cultural wing. I mean, Jared's been doing this work for a long time, right? And to me, there's this lack of acknowledgement that is, because if you look at the, the heydays of a lot of things, things that we, we respect, culture was a big part of it. You know, I, I, there were stories of the, um, of, they would, they would drop uh, film canisters of revolutionary films into places like Vietnam for the, that they could watch. I mean, the Cuban revolutionary filmmakers went to Vietnam to make a film about them. Right, and then they screened it. They did private screenings. Latin America, that was a huge thing. Going into the actual factories and screening films with the factory workers about the revolution and about the politics that needed to happen. And there seems to be a, I'm not saying it's not happening, not at all, but I think there is a, there isn't the commitment to it. And then you create a revolutionary culture amongst the people who are, who are into that. And I think there has to be a, 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 an extension of that. But I think on the flip side, the artists have to let go of these bourgeois structures. And I, I, would speak to, I would speak to myself. There's a lot of people who claim to be very political and radical who will you know, post about Marx all day, but they're still bowing over to Sundance, which is a conglomerate that is like literally shaping how film should be, right? The Sundance Institute, all these places, they're, they're, they're telling us how narratives need to be, what blackness is, what being Latin American is, what being LGBTQ politically is. It's like, it's, 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 there has to be a divorce if you're of that. There's gonna be people who wanna go to that, but if you want that, so that there has to become a better relationship between, between the cultural um, and, 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 the grand, and the grander leftist movement that I, that I, that I think is, has, is, is suffers today. There is, a, there is a schism that I see. Mm -hmm. Well, it, you know, it has to be like a cultural criticism because mm -hmm. if, you know, Vietnam, Cuba, you, if you have revolutions, mm -hmm. then the whole, the whole artistic thing Kind of, one hundred percent. Things things change, right? But if you when these films come out, you know you have someone has to be there and say, you know, this what's this is what's going on. And oh, I completely agree with that too. I agree with that too. We we, we definitely need that that multi frontal yeah. it's, it's, war. It's like it's like Black Black Panther, right? Um, yeah, people are loath to criticize it, and <laughs> it's like. I mean, one, you know, you kill off the black revolutionary, right? And, and, first, like, and pathologize him throughout yeah, the entire film. Yeah, pathologize, right? <laughs> right? But then, then, you know, I know it's someone, you know, a sister close to me, she, you know, she's well, well off. She saw it the second time, you know, and she lost it. When, she, when, he, when he said, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> my ancestors in the Middle Passage. But the other thing, <laughs> what is not, what is not, but it's, you know, but this is what's sold to us. Did anyone see American Gods, the slave ship? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. In yeah. 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 Now, now, what, Jones. yeah. Now, what bothered, what really bugged me about mm -hmm. that, you know, I was like, I'm surprised it's got on TV. But the thing that got me with this is, well, brothers, you, you don't burn down the ship unless you're going to lose. Right? 
they set fire to the ship. It's like, well, you know, first you get rid of them. You, if you can't get rid of them, then you burn it down. But you don't burn it down when you, you know, you got the rest of you rising up. You know, that doesn't make any sense because you could take the ship and go wherever. Right? And remember, it was a white guy who did Django on Unchain, where you see the, you know, with his, you know, slavery, this is Gerda Dameron, and that's it. And, you know, he rides off, and there you go. Right? Because the, the, the thing with the Black Panther films, this is, this is the thing, this is going to get really kind of like meta cultural, right? <laughs> Who is Killmonger Indijaka's mother? They don't have her, right? Sure. Huh? They don't have one. She doesn't have one in the film. Killmonger doesn't have one in the film. No. Right. Yeah. But what's the implication? You get these guys, this guy comes, he's in LA, he's at a certain time, right? And all of a sudden he's converted to the black, the fraud's converted to the black. So who's the mother? It's gotta be a sister. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. maybe Ram, mm -hmm. Black Panther. Uh -huh. So, but I you know, what you mean. right? Yeah. But the Wakanda, the whole film, it follows this the the dictum from 1662. It's parta sequitur ventrum. Okay, the condition of the child follows the condition of the mother. All right. And that's the, that's the slave that was laid on black people, which means you got to keep black men away from white women, right? But you, once you have black women, so slaveness becomes blackness, mm. right? Now, follow me, follow me, right? Who's, who's, Obama, who's, who's Obama's mother? Yeah, she's Irish. Mm -hmm. Who's Kamala's mother? South Asian. Yeah, she's right. from India. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. What's the connection to American slavery? Oh no, that was the thing. Eleanor that's, could have said it on a McLaughlin group. Obama is safe for white folks because he does not have the baggage of slavery. slavery. That's not, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. not the yeah. thing, right? And, they're both, but it's, and it's both tied to what? Mm -hmm. The mother. Well, slavery, but not not through them, not through them. But it's, but they're both tied to what the British Empire, because mm -hmm. as far as Kenya, mm -hmm. and the, the, the parents, they, you know, mm -hmm. they came to Jamaica, and then, you know, so you know, so I'm saying this this whole thing, you know, the meta thing, is that this whole this this sort of like unsaid dictum about black folks, it's still sort of operating. Right, and it even operated in the Black Panther movies because those, you know, people say, "Oh, I would love to live in Wakanda." I said, "Well, I, I don't well, see not, it. Not, not, not me, not I." Because they didn't they, show you the workers, and I know that's where I would have been. So they. I mean, is it all that? My first question was, "Wait, wait, 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 and is it AI?" But this theory invented the chat. The other thing, right? Just the other Something thing. My head, so. they, 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 they kind of only really like elite Afro Americans. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they land in the thing, what did they say? Well, we're gonna bring you a STEM. A nonprofit. Oh, well, STEM come on, program. man. <laughs> no, they said it was a art program. Old, they old just had an program. They even had a art program. It's stuff, I mean, come on. Man. I mean, I would, I would, I would say, look towards the the LA Rebellion of the seventies. Oh, yeah. All, 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 all of the, all of that stuff from 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 Burnett, who's, who's still around. Um, so, huh? Contemporary. I'm gonna honestly say, say no, no, not at, not, not at all. I mean, I, I won't even tell myself, but like, no, like, um, uh, but you know, huh? Because and, and and I'll give you a quick answer. Why is because. The black cinematic tradition has been cut off from that that part. I mean, look, you go to film school, which is how most people become filmmakers in this country. They're not even taught about Oscar Michel, right? Right? They're definitely they're taught about Spike, yeah. right? And they're taught to emulate. You know, if, if you look at funny, Spike Lee updated his uh, his must see list of movies, and he put it out there. And if you look at the films that are on it. The, the absence 
no black. Um, no black. And, and, and no black. And no, and he has a couple Sam Ben films. He has like he has like, he's Black Girl, which is a phenomenal film. But he doesn't have to get into his some some of his other films that, that get a bit more radical. No 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 Mambete, nothing like that. He doesn't he does not engage in that. If you look at the films, they are they are part of a very pro, a project that is global in the terms of global dominant cinema. Right, so the education of black filmmakers have been cut off from from their um, from their from their origins, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, I mean, I teach at a film school, and when I get black students, one of the things that happens is I, I I tell them they have to watch these films, and they don't even know who these directors are and these projects are, or, or they know superficially. People know Julie Dash because you know Beyonce aesthetically robbed her. And things like that, you know, and things like that. It's a bar. It is. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about yeah. your panel in general. Yeah. How you guys, uh, I, I know we got to go. But yeah. Ra Raul Peck, to me, he's probably. If, if, if there is a tradition yeah. of people like. I like Peck's earlier Sam films. Sam Pollard and all those guys. Yeah. Just, just from a content standpoint, what they're putting out, granted, it's all of its HBOs, mm -hmm. Amazon, so on and so forth, but just the quality of, of, of the content. Uh, is Raul Peck someone? Who I think Peck's earlier films. I have not, I, I, I've had my troubles with Peck's films since he started working on people like HBO. I think his Lumumba film is very, is very strong. Oh, yeah. I think it's Pimo for the Listen, if we don't have, but the, the thing is, if, if, if I, I'll rest on what Daruba Ben Wahab once said about the, what he knew was the failure of Spike Lee's film on Malcolm. X, that if you've seen the film about Malcolm X, you should walk out of that film wanting to do something, right? Like oh, yeah. wildly off the record and unsanctioned. Yeah. So, so we don't. If you don't feel that way, leaving a film yeah. about black people or black struggle or whatever, then it's not. Then it's not. It's not that. It's yeah. not that. And look, and if you look at some of the stuff in the LA Rebellion, you, you do, you know, watch some of Sam Banner, or some article, you, you, you do get a, a feeling in you. You know, and you know they, they take that away. What about like sorry to bother you? <laughs> I I I have my job. Look, well, that's a long we conversation. Have to distinguish what I th what I think was the intent with the with the original question, and then these these sort of rare, almost miscellaneous off the like like that film is is not. Uh, I, I like it. I, think I have my challenges with that. I, have a, okay, I, I think it's the class version of, I think it is the class will get out as to race is my one-liner about it, but I think that these films, one, we should recognize that they have to do comedy horror genres just to say anything remotely political, and then they're not part of the mainstream. They, you know, most black, the black working class students that are in my class, they have not seen any of Moose's films. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything about any of that. And that's one of the ways I mark how we're how we're being effective and how we're, who we're reaching. Because they're not, they don't watch my show unless I assign it for points. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't, you know what I mean? So they're not getting, Stanley Nelson and like all these. No, they don't oh, even. They, but they don't even watch that. But yeah. Stanley Nelson is. Look, when my favorite critique from my man Todd of Dr. CBS's critique of Isabel Wilkerson uh -huh. was that she wrote it to a white audience in the Boston Review. And Todd <laughs> said, when, when you write to us, let me know. Which I thought was a nice. But, but that's, that's. That's Stanley Nelson. That's brilliant. Stanley Nelson. That's what a lot of these black films yeah. and documentaries are. They're, they're, they're well funded product, product, products or targeting. Products. White, yeah. affluent, yeah. white art. Not even white. I mean, affluent white art. Yes. I, sorry to bother you in Boots is a longer conversation to me. I, Don't you I, hate on Boots? I, what I will say is I, I, <laughs> I, I go back to Walter Benjamin, the aestheticization the okay. of politics. That's fair. I have a long, I, I have long, I have longer critique coming on Boots. <laughs> hey, thanks everybody. Thank you. And what do you sacrifice? Calm. Kindness, kinship. Love. I've given up all chance at inner peace. I made my mind a sunless space. I share my dreams with ghosts. I wake up every day to an equation I wrote 15 years ago for which there's only one conclusion. I'm damned for what I do. My anger, my ego, my unwillingness to yield, my, my eagerness to fight, they set me on a path from which there's no escape. I yearn to be a savior against injustice without contemplating the cost, and by the time I look down, it's no 
a log already ground beneath my feet. What is my, what is my sacrifice? I'm condemned to use the tools of my enemy to defeat them. I burn my decency for someone else's future. I burn my life to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see. Now the ego that started this fight will never have a, a mirror or an audience or, or the light of gratitude. What do I sacrifice? Everything, 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 everything. everything.